Hi everybody. So we are going to be working on this assignment called Inspirational Ransom Note. So you are going to pick a quote and you're going to be creating a poster in the style of a ransom note like you see here. Uh, this one says success is the ability to go from one failure to another with no loss of enthusiasm. It was a quote by Winston Churchill. I did not put the author's name on here. If I do decide to make another one, I will put the uh, source and it was from Winston Churchill. So what you should do to start this assignment is that you're going to find for yourself uh, a quote. In fact, I was asking you guys to find three of them. So you can see here, I put in a Google Doc, which is what I want you guys to do, put in a Google Doc, at least three different quotes. So I've been doing this project for a while, so I have quite a few. So once you find one that you think that you want to use, you can highlight it. So I have a different one that I'm going to use. Life is like riding a bicycle. To keep your balance, you must keep moving. So my demonstration is not going to be the Winston Churchill quote. I'm going to do a whole different one uh, by Albert Einstein. So getting back to this image, you can see that each and every letter is a different uh, style. Okay, if you look carefully, you should not see uh, the letter used twice. Okay, that's one of the things that I would like uh, from you guys is to not use the same letter twice. Now, where do you get the letters from? So in your assignment uh, from a couple of days ago, I got you for you this um, image. It's letters JPEG. So at this point you should have downloaded your letters. So you should have your letters downloaded, this image downloaded, and to see it up close, it looks like this. So you can see that these are the letters that I used in order to finish up this. Okay. Um, I'm going to show you some ways that you can use the same letter twice and making it look different. For example, you can stretch it out a little bit, you can change the color, or um, one of the last things I'm going to show you is how you can create a whole new um, letter based on, you know, putting a text down and putting a, um, a square down. For example, if you look at this right here. Notice I have no punctuation, nor do I have any letter um, numbers rather. So if I needed any of that stuff, I would have to make it myself. So you can see I have a period at the end of the sentence and I created that. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that. If you need some inspiration for quotes, uh, I gave you a couple of links. Uh, one to Brainy Quote, which is a nice library of different quotes. Another one is IMDB, Internet Movie Database, if you needed some quotes from a from film or from television. Uh, you can also use music lyrics or if you just want to make up a quote of your own that's fine. But like I said they should be compiled in a list right here. If you wanted to see some samples of student work you can go to artsonia.com you can type in Sparta Middle School and if you search in the school tab here you'll find projects from last year and if you scroll down you'll find some inspirational notes from last year there's 16 pieces from two years ago there's like 40 something yep 48 and if you keep going down I've been doing this project for a few years so you can certainly click on the tab on the uh, thumbnail and it'll give you all of the different designs that other people came up with so you can get get an idea of what this design is going to look like okay so the way that we're going to do this project is that we are going to take each word from our quote and we're going to be creating a separate image for each word so in this quote right here life is like riding a bicycle to keep your balance you must keep moving. So that means in this quote, I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen different layers. And that's just for each individual word. 
I'm not counting any um, punctuation, like the period, the comma, the dash. I'm not counting any of that for now. So I'm going to be preparing myself to have each one of those words as a separate layer. Now to start, I'll start with the first word, life. So I'm going to go to Pixlr and I'm going to open up that image that has the letters. And you should have downloaded this and this should be saved into your P drive. Okay, this is going to be where we're going to be drawing those letters from. So you can see in the L's in the center here, I have one, two, three, four, five different L designs. Uh, for eyes, I have one, two, three, four, five different I designs. I have five different F designs, and they gave us six different E designs. So I'm going to be picking the letters from there. So not only do I leave this open, I'm also going to open up a new image. Now the size of this image should be big enough so you can fit the words on there pretty well, you know, the, the letters. Um, and you want it kind of large, so let's do this. We're going to go with the width as 2,000 pixels per inch and the height 1,000 pixels per inch. You're going to use this every single time. So I'm going to change the name to the name or to the word that I'm going to be creating, which is life. I'm going to keep the background empty. Okay, so this is where my letters are going to go. So I'm going to be taking an L, an I, an F, and the E, and I'm bringing them all over to this image right here. So to start, I'm going to be using the zoom tool, and there's a couple ways that you can zoom. If you hit the zoom tool and the shortcut's the letter Z, it'll, it'll give you this magnifying glass with a plus on it, and you can zoom in. You can use, once you've zoomed in, you can use these bars on the bottom and the right to maneuver it so you get nice, get those, that area right in the center. You can also use Command plus to zoom in. I'm sorry, control plus and control minus to zoom out. Also, if you want to move from place to place once you're zoomed in, if you hold the space bar down, it'll change to the hand or pan tool, and that'll allow you to move to different areas of the picture. You can do a lot of these things also in this navigate box right here, this window. You can zoom in and out. You can also move this red box around to the areas you want. You want to work really pretty close so you can see the edges of the square that you're picking. Okay, so I'm going to pick this first L. So there's two different tools that you're going to use to select the, the, the letter. One is you can go to the lasso tool and you go to polygon. So one is the polygon lasso tool. The way this works is if you click on the corner, you put the crosshair and the, where it crosses at the corner and you click, uh, it'll give you this little line that is hanging on here. So I'm going to go to the other corner and click. And every time you click, that's the corner of the polygon. So you're going to be clicking, I guess, four times as we're creating a rectangle. Okay. And you finish it off. So now you have this selection. You are now going to copy this. So you can go up to Edit and Copy. And the shortcuts uh, Control C. Then you go to Life. And again, you can go up to Edit and go to Paste, or you can just hit Control V. All right. So the L is there. I'm going to do the same thing for my other letters. Now, the way that this is set up, I'm on this. Um, the lasso tool and my mode is new selection. So what that means is if I click away from the selection, it's going to automatically set up a new selection for me. So just keep that in mind. If you want to get rid of the marching ants, like you see, I have them right here. If I hit command or control D, um, that is deselect and it'll get rid of my selection. All right. So I'm going to pick this eye right here. Another tool you can use besides using the lasso tool, you can use this marquee tool. Make sure the type is on rectangle 
and it works very very similar it might go a little faster because it's a matter instead of clicking on the four corners you're dragging that selection until you cover the entire rectangle and then you can copy it control C go to light control V so you can see that the layers are stacking one on top of another right in the center of that square so now I'm going to work on the F I'll use this one right here. I'll stick to the marquee tool. Okay, whoops. I'm going to use an E. I'll use this one right here. Again, I'm going to zoom in. Um, on my mouse, I have one of those dials in the middle, so that allows me to zoom in and out pretty quickly. That's what you see here. I'll go back to the polygon. Now I'm going to purposely make a mistake here and I'll show you how you can fix it. Command D, I got rid of that. Okay. Now the next step is we are going to now arrange these the way that we would like. So you can see they're very small in the space. So I might, as I'm arranging them, and I'll be using the arrange tool, I can make these bigger and I can make these smaller. So I'm going to make all these letters big just so I can see what I'm doing here. So after you bring all of your letters together, the next thing you're going to do is now you got to think about how you want these arranged. So if you remember seeing some of the samples, some of these letters um, in the students' designs are just all up and down. And maybe what they did is they had all the tops of them lined up together evenly. Um, maybe they had the bottoms all lined up together evenly. I would suggest to make some letters bigger, some smaller, just for visual interest, makes it look more like ransom notes. If you make them all the same height, it just may lose that whole randomness of the ransom note. So definitely change the size a little, you know, a little bit, so you have a nice variety. You can also, if you decide to at this stage in the game, instead of uh, the arrangement being fixed, if you set it as free, what that's going to let you do is it'll let you stretch out some of these letters the way that you, know, if you wanted some variety. But right now I'm just going to keep it more or less the way it was. Okay. So if you remember, some of the letters even had um, have them crooked and that's okay too. You can have them crooked, you can have them slightly overlapping, but the rule of thumb is whatever you do to one letter or one word rather, you gotta do it to all the rest of the letters. Like you might, or all the rest of the words, you might want them all to be straight up and down like this in the same space in between the letters. Just make sure you do that for all of the words moving forward. Okay, so here's my big mistake right here. I, I selected too much. So you can definitely trim them up. I even have some white area around the eye that I might want to trim up. So to get rid of it, it's actually pretty easy. I mean, you might want to grab like the eraser tool and you can certainly erase it, but you want to have that nice clean edge. So you're better off doing this. You can use either the lasso, polygon lasso tool or the marquee tool. And you can make that selection. Select what you want to get rid of make sure you are on the correct layer, meaning the correct layer is active, meaning that that's lit up in the layers window. So I'm on that E. So I made that selection. So whatever I selected, if I go to my keyboard and hit delete, it will delete it. So I'm going to use the polygon tool over here and do the same process right over here. So I'm making the selection of the top piece. Now you can see when I hit delete, nothing happened and there was nothing in selection because I was not on the right layer. So you want to make sure that when you're doing this, you are on the correct layer. So 
one from here. And if you make a mistake, if this isn't the right spot, you can hit Control D and it'll deselect and you can start again. So you just clean them up. Okay. So the way that I want this set up here is uh, I'm going to make them slightly crooked. Have a little, little overlapping. Another thing you can do is that you can change the order. So if you wanted the L to be in front of the I, it's just a matter of going to the Layers window and moving them one on top of another. So I'm just going to kind of keep them sort of random. I'm going to have the, the rotation, not really so much a pattern. So one last thing. So we've talked about changing the size. We've talked about cropping out the spaces that we want to get rid of. Um, another thing, and we talked about the position, like how you want these rotated or straight up. And, you, know, you just want to keep them consistent. Like you don't want this L being right out there in the middle of nowhere and the rest are all clustered together. You want there to be a sense of, a sense of uh, unity there. So you want them to kind of be similar. Similar randomness. Okay, so if I'm looking here, the last thing that I can talk about is you might find that letters might look similar in color and you might want to change them around. Like I see that this is orange and black, this is an orangey and black color. Uh, you can absolutely change it. You can revisit what we've done in the past. You can go to judge, uh, Adjustment, Color Lookup, and you can change the color based on these These gradients. You don't want anything too crazy bright and you can also change the color. Like let's say that I find that this blue is just too bright. I can mellow it out and go to a darker color here so you can see that it makes it more gray. I can bring these in. That's one way. Another way you can change a color is go to the L is that you can go to hue saturation. You can move the hue around change the color like that. You can move the saturation up and down. You can move the lightness up and down. Uh, you can hit colorize and colorize will make the whole thing monochromatic. You can see the inside of the L and the background are both the same color. So those are some ways you can do that. Now once you have everything arranged the way you want, this looks like the way that you want it to look, you can now crop it. And that's the very last thing we do. So cropping it just means that you're going to come really close to the edges here. Just like that. And then we hit apply. So it's cropped. One final thing, now that we're done, I'm going to save. And we are saving it as a PNG and you want to keep it the name of the word that you are using. If you have a, a quote that uses the word more than once, you might have, you know, you might just put a number at the end there, like life one, life two, that kind of thing. But I think in my quote, I only have one life. <laughs> so I hit download. Okay, so you're going to do this process through for every single word that you have. And also, after you make them all, you make sure you save those PNGs in your Google Drive in that folder that you should have in your Google Drive called Branson. Okay, so you're going to be keeping all of the letters or all the words in that graphic design folder of yours in Branson. Okay, so I've been working on this project and I have almost every word done. I'm on my last word and the word is moving and it's got a letter I in it. But what I found is that in my quote I used up all of the I's. In fact I think I used one twice. I just changed the color of them. So I only have five I's to work with and I used them all. So what do you do? Well one of your options aside from just changing the color and such is that you could create your own letter. So I set all these up and they're all on their own layer right now because I'm still in the working stage. What I can do is I can create 
two more layers. One is going to be a shape of a some sort of square I can change the shape of and the other one is going to be um, an, a letter I. So I'm going to start on my shape. Now I could use the shape tool but I'm going to use for this demonstration because I just find it to be a little bit easier I'm going to use this marquee select. Okay so I use the marquee select and I'm going to be selecting kind of a shape where an eye would fit. Now, I'm not really going to be too picky. I can change the shape of this, and you know, pretty easily. So I just kind of laid out what kind of size it is. I'm also going to hit this little plus in the layers, which is going to allow me to make a new layer. And the layer is empty. So it's called layer 7 right here. And that is the layer that I'm going to be putting this uh, rectangle in soon. Okay? So I created a shape. Now if I mess up, let's say I've made a new layer and I don't have that selection, you can do this again at any time. Okay. Now I'm going to use the paint bucket or the fill tool. It looks like a paint bucket. It's going to use the color that's the foreground color right here. So if I wanted to change it, I can certainly change it. Maybe I want it to be something different than these two taupey colors. I want it to be maybe a little bit more maybe brighter and maybe have a little bit of like a bluish tinge to it. So I can go like this and say OK. And then I make sure that I'm on the fill tool and I just go inside that space right there. Now you can see that it's its own layer. The layer 7 is just this rectangle. I'm going to hit Command D and get rid of the marching ants. And now you can see that it's its own little space that I can fit it wherever I want. I can rotate it the whole bit. It'll act just like how the other ones do. Now before I go too crazy with arranging it, I have to put a letter inside of it. So I'm going to use the type tool, or the text tool, and I'm just going to click somewhere inside this space. And it's going to ask me, okay, do you want to add a new text layer? And I'm going to add it. Okay. So it gives me this whole big template, e, you know, whatever, for lorum, e, whatever, something in Greek. Um, I'm going to highlight this. It's a text box, so I highlight it like I would if I was in a Google Doc. And I'm going to put the letter I. Now I could try capital I to start, I could try lowercase i, whatever. Notice that the color of the type is this color right here, which is the same color as the foreground color. Now if I end up putting this eye on top of here, I won't be able to see it because it's the same color. So it's pretty important early on that you're going to change the color and you change it by highlighting the letter and highlighting this color right here, clicking on it. And let's say that I want it to be like a nice dark forest green kind of color. So there it is. Okay. So you can see that it kind of is a big text box around it. It's kind of, it's a little clumsy to, to work with. So I could move the text box a little smaller and put it on top so I can see what I'm doing. I can also click on this type tool. If I hit the edit, it goes back to highlighting it. it makes it a little smaller, easier to see. Uh, it will allow me to change the size. It will also allow me to uh, change the color. So I hit edit. I can change the color. Uh, most important, I can change the font. So I'm going to click on this font and I'm going to select something unique. Oops, let me go back to this text layer. You can see it's picking different groups of eyes. I feel like, oh, I kind of like that. I think that's a real different shape. Some have those lines called serifs on the top and bottom. So that's going to be my uppercase letter. Well, that's kind of interesting. If I want to see what the lowercase letter is, I can just put it right next to it. Yeah. Maybe I want to do a lowercase. I think I want to do a lowercase on this. Okay. So that's it. So I'm not that concerned about making the letter fit with the rectangle. Right now I just want it to be big enough. So I'm going to hit edit one more time 
and I'm going to bring the size up to 500. Make it a little bit bigger. Just so it's, this I here is about the same size as the rest of the letters. I can change the size later on too. Okay, so right now there's two layers here. There's this letter, this type layer, and layer 7. So I'm going to go to the Arrange tool now, and I'm just going to arrange this so it is the right size. Now right now it's stuck in proportion, this shape. If I go to Free, it will allow me to squish it up. So if you see all the rest of those letters, you know how these squares are really, really close to the letter. That's how I want this to be set up. So get the, the letter and the shape behind it together like this, like they belong together. And once they belong together, they look good. We're going to take these two layers and we're going to merge them together so they're one layer. To do this, I'm going to first, I have to make this type layer, I have to what they call rasterize it, which is instead of it being a type layer, it's going to be like a normal looking layer as though I just took like a marker and drew on it or something. So to do this, you go to layer, make sure you're on this type layer, go to layer, and you're going to rasterize text slash element. And like I said, it's going to simplify it. You'll see that it, it will look different in the Layers window. Okay, so you can see now it's rasterized and it's just called I. Some things you can't do now that it's rasterized, you cannot change the text. Like you can't change the style. You can't make it an uppercase. It's It doesn't act like a type layer anymore. It's acting just like a shape. So now I'm going to merge them. So I'm going to go to the three buttons here and I'm going to select Merge Down. Okay, so what it did is now everybody's stuck together. Okay, so it's this point. Now, the bounding box around it is a little big and a little clumsy, but if you can work with that, that's okay. All right, now I'm going to start working this together and finishing up this word. We're going to want to look. Just like I was doing before. I'm going to change the color of the O because it looks a little too much like the V. Let's change the order. So hopefully you guys are taking some sort of enjoyment in this process, even if it's just a, you're starting to feel kind of smart in it. You, know, you should start feeling pretty confident in this whole process. So again, if I want to change the color, the adjustments, and if I get a brightness in, or temperature and tint, it will make it warmer or cooler. It's probably just a little, a little different. That looks good. Okay. And... Once I'm satisfied with the way this looks, I'm going to bring this down here and move you over. Now what I'm going to do is um, crop it and save it. Just like I've been doing with all the rest of the words. Fine. Save. Moving. Download. Okay. I'm getting there. So I've been working on this and so what I have are all of the words set up. They're all laid out and they're all saved as PNGs. Actually, I have one word that I did not add yet and I'm going to add that at the end and it's the letter A. So it's A, A bicycle. So I also did not do punctuation. So I'm going to show this to you now. This is something you could put in at the end or you can do it right now. Um, so life is like riding a bicycle. That's my first sentence. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to open up bicycle uh, because I want to put a period right at the end. So bicycle is all done. It's all in one layer. Uh, I'm going to unlock this and I'm just going to make it a little smaller and because I want to allow some room on the side here to put the period. 
So this would be the same thing if I needed a dash at the beginning of the author's name, if I wanted to put a, a comma, an exclamation point, even a contraction. So if I said, if I had something like can't, C-A-N-T, I would just have to make sure I have a, a space between the N and the T to do this. So right now, I, all I needed is space right here to put, see where the period's going to be. So uh, just like before, how we were adding letters, I'm going to add a, a shape, which is going to be about the size of the period. I am going to add a new layer. So I hit the plus sign and go to empty. I'm going to dump a color in, something that would be best fitting for the background. That's just fine. And then I'm going to go to the type tool and I'm going to add some text. And all I need is a period. So that could look like a square or a circle, depending on the font. Uh, I have to make sure I change the color of the font. And it's teeny tiny. I'll make it bigger. So, I mean, I'm not going to be that picky when it comes to making a, a period here. And then I'm just going to put it in place where it belongs. I'm going to make it bigger. So. literally like a square within a square. I guess another way you can do this is if you make the shape another, you can make another square. That way you don't have to deal with getting it to fit and deal with this the type. Okay, I do want to make this bigger, but I'm just going to join them together first. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Let's see what we get. Actually, that's pretty good. Okay. Now I'm just going to get that square to match, get everybody centered, and I can try, I can actually merge down without having to rasterize. Now it's just a matter of making it the right size. A little cookie. And that's it. Alright, so that was a quick one with punctuation. The thing I would have to do now is to save this again. Okay. And now it saved it as bicycle and in parentheses it has one. So that's a new version of it. And then I'm just going to make sure that I put it in here. Bring it over to my graphic design folder. Yeah, all, all uh, matches update with the existing. Update with the existing. Okay. So that should have been added. Just like that. Good. Okay. So now I have all of my words all set up, including the punctuation. So you can see I have comma, I have periods where I need them to be. So now it's just a matter of getting them onto a poster. So now I'm going to make my background. I'm going to create new. And this background I want really, really big. If I want this to be an 8 inch tall by 10 inch wide image, 300 pixels per inch, which is pretty good. That means the width is going to be 3000, the height's going to be 2400. Now you can add a background if you think that you want to add a, a specific color to a background. You can do that. If you wanted to add a gradient, you can certainly add um, a gradient if you feel like that's the way you want to go with this. So you can make these decisions later because this is going to be uh, in the background. Okay, There's going to be a bunch of things that you're going to be able to add to it. Okay, So uh, for the time being, I'm going to just make this a solid color. Oops. In order to make it a solid color, I'm going to get it a solid color. So I'm going to go with hue saturation. I'm going to bring the lightness all the way up so it's pure white. And I'm going to put a color in there. I'll put a nice, very, very crazy light, 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 light blue like that. Okay. So it's at this point you want to open up all of those images and you want to bring them to here. So to do that, you're going to go to Layers, and you add this plus sign. 
and it's going to ask you what kind of layer you want to add an image. And then this is when you are going to gather all of those words. Okay. You could possibly see if you can add more than one at a time. I added a bunch of them. Okay. So I am going to just pause my video and I'm going to set these up all in the place placement that I want. Okay. So it might mean that I might need to make them smaller. You know, I'm not going to make it perfect. I'm just going to line them up so I can see all these uh, all these words. Okay. I have the letters kind of messed up, but their the words are kind of arranged. Everything looks, you know, like it's all going to fit. I'm missing the word A. So again, if I wanted to just get the letter A, I can certainly just make a letter out of, you know, making a shape and then another shape, or I can certainly go back to my letters and find a, a letter A that I haven't used yet. I don't know if it's possible. So I've used uh, a few of them. So let me just find, let's see, yeah. checking on the A's. So I'm going to go back to my untitled. So I got this A and this A and I have this A. So I would definitely like to use something different than those three that I already used. So let's take a look. I'll use that one. And which one didn't I use? I don't think I used. Okay, I see which one I have not used. And that's the one I'm going to get. So this one right here. Uh, so. So if you have these scraggling little letters, you didn't need to make it into a, you know, a separate PNG. You can just set it up on there because it's its own separate thing. Okay, so it's at this point that you want to set this up so it's legible and you want to set it up so it's kind of organized. So you got to ask yourself some questions, right? Do you want it to be set up so it's uh, what they call justified, where all the writing is is centered in the middle. So you could see this first line, life is like A, is kind of like nice and centered. You could decide on having some words off to the one side and then off to the other side. You can even make your words themselves a little crooked if you wanted to, but you just don't want to lose the look, the legibility of this of this um, poster. You want to make sure it's it's legible. So I can do life is like a bicycle to keep your balance, maybe comma, and then maybe I'll say you must, whoops, must keep, and then maybe move in here or something. And then maybe I could put Albert Einstein maybe off to the side here, um, or maybe put it in the center. So you got to have some sort of nice consistent rhythm. Be aware of the size of your words because you might want some words to be slightly bigger. You can see your is kind of small compared to the word bicycle as far as the height goes. So I can certainly change that as I would like to. But you want to, if you're making some things larger, you have to have a reason why you're making those words larger. Maybe you want them to be prominent in your quote. So as you move them around, you're going to make those decisions. Make sure you're filling up the whole entire page. It's okay if the person, the, the source, is smaller than the rest of them. It's perfectly fine. That's pretty common. Uh, you also want to possibly make sure that the source is down on the bottom. And... So you're just going to kind of scoot them around and make those decisions. So no sense in watching me. I will put my my recording on pause and uh, I'll keep working. And then when you see me again, I'll have everything laid out the way I want. So I kind of created a bit of a rhythm. So I have every sort of, uh, every sort of line is split up in two lines here. So I have life is like all the way to the left. And then I have a bicycle all the way to the right. 
I have to keep your balance. So to keep your is to the left and I have balance on the right. You must keep moving. So it's at this point again, if you feel that some of the words might be bigger and you have no reason to make them bigger, then you know certainly get them about the same size as the rest of your words. Right. Uh, a couple things to note, you should have these words kind of set up very similar. Now I have a lot of like sort of randomness to it, but a couple things I have in common is that I always have them touching each other, you know, and overlapping in some spots. And I, uh, with that being said, I'm creating a, a sense of rhythm to this, but I'm also having some organization. I'm paying attention to the spaces in between the words. I'm making sure that they're about the same. And that's really going to help visually. So it's easier to read. Okay. So I'm just doing these slight changes as we go along. And notice I did make Albert Einstein. I put them off to the left. I just thought it would just be kind of makes more sense to put them there. Um, you can even, if you wanted to stack it, you can do that. Some people want to add some images to the background. So, but uh, once you're pretty happy with it, that's good. So, another thing you can think about is something different in the background. So, if you do a search, and let's say you want uh, sort of like a cloudy day or some sort of um, maybe like a blackboard, let's say that you want it to look like a, like a, there's, you glue this onto a black, blackboard. First of all, spell it correctly, not like how I'm doing it, but uh, <laughs> all right. And then I'm going to go to. Um, Images. There are no images. Interesting. Let's go back to this. Okay, here we go. So, if you wanted to put it on some sort of background looking like this, that's fine. You can go to Tools, Size, Large. Don't forget, we're putting this on something that's 3,000 by 2,400 pixels. So you probably want this to be nice and large. So you find something that kind of works. Right click, open image in new tab. All right, that's going to work out fine. Save image. So you want to eventually save it into your um, into your P drive. Now I'm going to go ahead and add it. So I downloaded it, so I'm adding the plus. I'm going to add an, oops, not an empty layer. I'm going to add an image layer. And I'm going to go ahead and find what I just downloaded. So I'm going to go to date modified. And it should be, should be called Blackboard. Or well, maybe I downloaded it. Let me put it on the desktop. There it is. Okay. So there it is. Okay. Um, it's in front of everything, so I want to drag this all the way down underneath everything. Okay. So, and then you want to expand it so it goes off the page. That's okay if it goes off the page. Okay. So you can see it definitely changes the look of your design. Um, if you like the blackboard idea, you can certainly use it if you're using a picture. You want to do some variations of the picture to make sure that it doesn't uh, keep you from being able to read uh, what you wrote here. So um, that's pretty much it. The next video I'm going to show you is how you can make your letters stand out a bit if you have something that's really contrasting in the background. Some of the other things that I've seen in the background uh, from previous projects are images. So if you decide to do an image, it would be the same kind of um, recommendation to you. Is you just want to make sure that the image that you pick is not going to take away from the legibility of the words. So I found a picture of Albert Einstein and I'm going to bring it in the back here. So that definitely could be something else to consider. You could modify his picture. For example, I'm making the blackboard disappear. So what's behind it is this um, uh, light, light blue. 
I'm going to go to um, adjustments on Albert Einstein's picture, and I'm going to go to hue and saturation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to colorize him. Now I know he's black and white, but you know if you decide you might want to put a color on him to to make it look like you know there's a bit of a hue of color, you can do that. And if you increase the lightness, it might be a little easier to read your words, or you can decrease the lightness. So if you want to get his picture on there, you can certainly mess with that. Okay. What you can also do is you can lower the visibility of this image. If you bring the transparency down, what's happening is he's fading out so his image, it's like a, I don't know, like a, a piece of acetate or something where it's, it's fading out, but what's behind it is showing through. What's behind it is that blue, that light blue. So you can adjust the transparency, and that, it just kind of gives you this little glow of him on here. So, you know, something like that could be good. Now, I'm going to make this invisible. Uh, for the time being, and I'm just going to go with this white back, this light blue background. So another thing you can do, and this is optional, and again, some people might want to try doing this, is to put some effects around the letters. Now, in order to do this, like and to make it work, and, and to work for every single one of these layers, we're going to need to move these layers together. So I'm going to go to the top layer and merge down. So I'm going to go to this layer here, not all the layers, I'm going to merge down, merge down, merge down, merge down, oh, I guess 19 is not letting me, merge down. So what I'm doing is I'm taking these images, so these words, these PNGs, and I'm merging them down. Now I tried doing this with with the letters, but I wasn't able to do that. But we can certainly do this with our words. So basically what we're doing is we're merging all of these layers together, not the background, not Albert Einstein, just our letters. to merge with, so merge down. So it should be where all of your letters are merged together. Okay, I'm going to get rid of letter 19. Okay, so these are all joined together. So what you can do is you can put the, you can put a glow around your letters, you can put a drop shadow on the letters, and they're all located in filter. So you go to filter, make sure that the letters layer is the one that's highlighted. So I would stay away from any inside glows, but you can go to, let's say, well, let's start with a drop shadow. That's probably the most popular. If I increase the opacity a little bit and increase the blur, you can start to see what happens. Offset X, that means that it's going to move to the right or to the left. You can kind of, kind of see it has a little bit of a kind of looks, makes it look like the papers are moved off of the surface. Okay, so it creates that, that cool look. So if you like that look, you can absolutely put that in. Okay, you don't want to get too extreme. You don't want it to be too, too much. You know, but just a little bit. It really kind of makes it look, gives a little bit more visual interest. And another thing that you can add is that you can also add a glow. Now the glow would work if you had something dark like this. So if I go to my image and I go to outer glow, what you'll see is, is exactly that. You get this outer glow. Now again, you don't want it to be too um, unrealistic. And you can increase the feather, you can lower the opacity, and increase the size and you know, there's there's different things that you can do that you can give it a little bit of a 
a little bit of a pop, if you would. But I would I would do it very, very subtly. So you can see the difference without it and with it. So that might be another thing that you want to keep. You don't want it, like I said, you don't want them to be like that. I think that's just too much. But to make them stand out. Could you do a combination of the drop shadow and the glow? Yeah, but I think you have to do the drop shadow first. But again, play around with it. See what your taste is. And again, uh, figure out what you want to put in the background, what you prefer. Okay, but for the biggest thing is make sure that this is legible. You also want to make sure that this fits nicely in the space. You don't want the letters to be, or the, the quote to be really small. You want it to be filling up that poster. Okay, and when you do save it to submit it, when you're absolutely positively done, you don't want to make any more changes to it, you're saving it as a P, a JPEG, and that's what you're going to send to me. But if it's something that you're going to consistently work on and you want to keep the layers, you want to possibly use the blackboard or you wanted to use, you know, Albert Einstein, or, you know, you can save this as a PXD because that will save all of your layers. Okay. But when you are done with it and it is your final, you're going to be saving it as this JPEG right here. Okay. I'm still working on it. All right. I think I showed you everything. If I missed something, I'll show you in class, but, you know, good luck with it all. Hope you're, hope you're having fun with this. There's a lot of information on here. I look forward to seeing what you guys come up with.